This lady, that's our speaker next, was called to be a pastor's wife at age 18 through a dream that her mother had. And in this dream, the Lord revealed to her mother that if Brenda would give her life completely to Christ, that she would become a pastor's wife. But if she refused and rebelled, her life would be filled with hardship and pain. So Brenda made that commitment to the Lord. And later on, as her family was transferred with the military to Georgia, that's where she met uh, John Kilpatrick. They, they later fell in love and, and married. And they have been senior pastors here at Brownsville since 1981. They have two sons, two grandsons, and a granddaughter. A new granddaughter is about three months old. This woman has been touched mightily by God, and you that have heard her speak can uh, uh, agree with that. She is an anointed speaker, a strong prayer warrior, and she is in demand around the world. She could be away all of the time now. However, she chooses to stay here uh, most of the time. But beyond all that, I've known Brenda Kilpatrick for about 14 years. And what you see is what you get. She is a warm, loving person, a friend like everybody wants to have. She is the same every time you see her. There is no pretense with, with Brenda Kilpatrick. And it's my privilege right now to give to you Welcome her, Brenda Kilpatrick, my friend and my pastor's wife. We're going to let her do a seminar on teaching uh, associates' wives. Uh, how to be a good one. She's a good one. She's a sweetheart, and uh, she is a good friend. We have lots of fun. She looks real polished, and but that little, she's just a little girl. We have so much fun when we get together. <laughs> well, hallelujah. God's good. He's good to women, isn't he? I'm telling you, this is, God's really, I, I just love everything that he's doing in this meeting. This has been father filtered. I was sitting reading one morning and I was reading about Deborah. That's how this thing was birthed. And the Lord said that Deborah and Barak must be one. And I got to thinking about that. That's leadership. That's women in roles with their husband under the right covering. And and this whole thing was birthed. And I started studying about Deborah and but anyway. God's saying something to us, and it's been line upon line and precept upon precept with the speakers that have come, one behind the other. And it's just marvelous how God has just all give us this, this word, and it's just building. You don't want to miss tonight, I'm telling you. Diane Sloan's going to do her message, and I've been there, and I've heard it, and it's, I said, you can't come to my conference unless you do that. So she's going to do that for us tonight. I'd like to say a word of thanks to all the workers that uh, have been in this meeting. Will you stand? All the workers from Brownsville and wherever the churches are, if you've helped in this conference, I want you to stand. We want to give you honor today. Cheryl, Grayson. We honor you. And we thank you. Cheryl Grayson sings on our worship team, has coordinated this whole thing. She is multi-talented. And uh, we honor her today, and we thank all the worship team. They always do such a good job. And uh, the new ladies that have joined us in worship, we thank God for you, too. You're a blessing to us. And even Sharon, the usher over there. <laughs> thank God for her. She's another Bill Bush. Well, glory to God. Let's get right into the message. If you get offended with my message today, I'm sorry. You'll have to take it up with the Lord. He gave it to me. <laughs> I'm going to ask every man in this room to leave. <laughs> now...
What I'm going to do is going to embarrass me more than them, though, <laughs> if they were in my presence. So I'm just asking them to leave. The title of my message today is Full or Empty? In Genesis 49, 25, it says, The God of your Father who helps you and Shaddai who blesses you with blessings of heaven above, blessings of the deep that couches below, blessings of the breast and womb. Now, God places in every woman a womb. He also gives her breasts, doesn't he? And he makes her fertile, and she's going to produce children if, if God per permits. I'm going to ask my daughter-in-law to bring my grandbaby up here. She is so precious. She was born October the 24th. I have two sons two grandsons, so you can imagine what I went nuts when I got a little girl. One night, this is Bethany May. <laughs> oh, say hello. Say hello. <laughs> you know, the difference in boys having the boys, they just kind of look at you, but the girl tries to talk. With all her, I mean, the boys did it a little later, but this girl, she just really has tried to talk. One night, my husband was sitting over here, and Karen was in the choir. Oh, by the way, this is the one that gave birth to my daughter, <laughs> granddaughter. This is my beloved Karen, and I have my beloved Elizabeth that's soon to join us. Elizabeth, will you stand? You've probably seen her on the video with Allison, and her mother, Melanie, would you stand? This is her mother, Melanie. John Michael, our son, go ahead. <laughs> John Michael, our son, is going to be married June the 14th to Elizabeth, so we're really excited about that. But one night, my husband was sitting on the platform, and he called Karen out of the choir, and he said he knew, uh, did he, yeah, he knew she was pregnant. He said, Karen? If we had a little girl, Bethany sure is a pretty name. <laughs> we didn't know what the name Bethany meant. We looked it up, and it means house of prayer. And then his mother that passed away five weeks before the revival broke out, her name was Ira May. And they, my son was very close to her, and so he called this baby May, Bethany May. And we look that word up, and it means the name, and it means child of light. So this is our prophetic baby. <laughs> Hallelujah. Thank you. She is precious, though. I had to dote a little bit over. <laughs> but, you know, when Karen had this baby, there's, there's a lot of care. For you young girls that haven't been married yet or or that are going to, or you're pregnant now, you better enjoy your rest. <laughs> if you're lazy, you're going to get unlazy real fast. You're going to have a rude awakening. It's wake-up call <laughs> because it's an unselfish life when you give birth to a baby. There's a lot of care that goes into them. You're going to have to nurse that baby love them, change their diapers, you're going to watch over them, you're going to hear their cries, and you'll know the difference when it's just one of those fussy cries, or, or if they're hungry, or their diaper changes. A mother just knows those things. Karen's going to take my baby, Bethany, and she's going to get her shots, and take care of her, do everything she can. She's going to play with her, nurture her, she's going to teach her things at home about the Lord, and then... She's going to have to send her to school and teach her things that she's going to need to prepare her for life. And then she's going to have to one day let her go and let her, in the things that she's put in her daughter, we pray, and all the good things, we pray that she'll go out and she'll be the God-ordained mother that God's called her to be. God made a breast. That's something men don't have. That we are, you, we have that. And it's unique. And sometimes, you know, you look at this. And some of us, 
they just come in all kind of sizes, don't they? <laughs> Some of them are long. <laughs> Some of them are round. Some are like CD discs. Well, I've got a few things I want to show you. This is a training bra. <laughs> this is what they start out in. I never had one of those. Those are nice. And girls, what I'm doing is all right because I'm not so sure that I'm going to release what I'm doing <laughs> on video. If you see any man, kick them out. We've got this size. That looks like about an A, an A cup. You'll identify yourself. <laughs> Maybe we're going to a B, not real sure. C. Getting a little bigger here. The girl's growing up. This is a D. D cup. She's really getting nice looking now. No implants for her. <laughs> Now, honey, I would, I could have got one bigger than this one. And I almost asked Ruth Heflin for hers. <laughs> but I didn't have the nerve, Ruth. <laughs> This one's a big mama. <laughs> My husband's mother was four foot 11 and the kids, the grandkids started calling her big mama. She was real tiny, but she had big breasts. I said, she could have fed the world. She was so big. Now, here's just a little paraphernalia that you're going to need if you're going to breastfeed. Yeah, this way you do it. How many of you know, have you ever used one of these? You know what it's like? Well, thank you, Jesus. Oh, breastfeeders. Here's a little breast pad for those that leak. Their breasts are so full, full of milk. Somebody want to come get my bras? <laughs> for you that are religious, please give me a break. <laughs> I was in a mall one time, and I'm kind of bashful about things like this. I really am. <laughs> I guess I just get inspired sometimes. <laughs> but this man, I ran into him, and he is, you know, real intellectual, and uh, he was speaking all over the country, and he's a real nice man, you know, and he was new in our church. And, and uh, so I ran into him at the mall, and I said, oh, how, how are you doing? He said, I'm fine. I said, is your wife here? He said, oh, yeah. She's over looking at the bras. So, you know, men just usually don't talk that way, or not to me anyway. And so I kind of blushed. I didn't know what to do. And I said, 
Uh, well, you know us ladies, we need a lift now and then. <laughs> I meant lift in spirits. I always say the wrong words. I got so embarrassed, I just, my, my face was blood red when I realized what I said and I didn't even say goodbye, I just walked off. <laughs> Why would God put breasts on women? What's the purpose of a breast? He made it for enjoyment. Proverbs 5:19 says, "Let her breast satisfy thee at all times." Talking about our husbands. And then the breasts sustain life. There's colostrum that comes down after the mother's milk comes in on the third day the milk comes down and there's colostrum that is in the milk that helps ward off disease. It's very high in vitamins. It nourishes the baby, doesn't it? And makes them feel satisfied. Psalms 29, uh, 22, 9 says, a child learns to trust. Listen at this. You made me trust while on my mother's breast. A hormone is released when you nurse to help you relax. That wasn't God thoughtful. <laughs> while you're sitting there doing your job, he, it's working for you too. Isn't he awesome how he made our bodies? Breastfeeding also shrinks the uterus faster and it, it stops the bleeding so you won't hemorrhage. A preacher told me a joke one time. It wasn't a joke, it was truth though, I forgot. It's really something that happened. His daughter had had a baby and she had lost a lot of weight, like too much. She would lost this baby stuff, fat. And uh, he said, honey, what you do? What are you doing? You look great. She said, oh, daddy, she said, I, I, the doctor gave me some diet pills, so I took the pills. He said, well, give me some of them. I need to get on a diet. So she gave him the name of the pills and gave him a few to get him down the road. So he took the pill, and uh, he was walk going down the road. Well, he's driving the car, and he starts to bear down. Ugh! Ugh! He said, Honey, there's something wrong with me. And he starts bearing down, and, and he said, call his daughter's name, uh, Melanie, whatever. He said, call Melanie and see what that pill, that, she gave me the wrong pill. And he called, and then and, um, he got on the phone, and she, he says, honey, I don't feel good. Something's wrong. You gave me the wrong pill. She said, oh, Daddy, I'm so glad you called. He said, I gave you the wrong pill. I gave you the pill to shrink the uterus. That pill says, where is it? Where is it? I can't find it. <laughs> oh. <laughs> this is fun. <laughs> oh. Nursing causes thirst. Most women today, they tell them to put their water out beside their uh, rocking chairs so they can have that water and drink as the babies partake in too. Years ago, when mothers couldn't nurse, they'd bring in a wet nurse to help out. You know, and in the deep south, they had the so-called southern bells that they didn't want to mess up their figures and their social life. So they brought in the black slaves to do their nursing for them. My mother fed my cousin because she almost died. She was feeding my brother at the same time. So she took on my cousin and they're very close today. There's a bonding that takes place when you breastfeed a baby. It's a closer bond. One lady's baby almost died and they tried everything they could. And finally, they got this baby. A lady says, I'll take your baby. I, I can help this baby. It had been in the, uh, the hospital six months, just nothing. No milk would agree with it. She took 
a cow's milk, a new calf that just gave birth, and she took that cow's milk and fed that baby, and that baby lived. The baby's me. I was in the hospital, in and out, for six months trying to get the right milk. This sermon, it was ordained for me. But you know, a lot of people are selfish. I asked my mother, I said, Mother, well, didn't your breast milk agree with me? She said, no, it was too inconvenient. I had your brother, and, and I had to go, and, and I know it's hard. You know, women were so busy, and, and it is inconvenient, especially when you're in revival. But uh, just too busy. Didn't take time. I could have died, you know? Got to take time for the babies. Let's look at El Shaddai's name. It means God Almighty, the one who blesses, who? The breasted one. It's the maternal side of God. In John 1, 18, it says, No man hath seen God at any time. The only begotten Son, which is in the bosom of, father, of the Father, he hath declared him. It was a place of intimacy. Jesus Christ is our restorer and nurturer. John, the disciple whom Jesus loved, reclined on his breast, didn't he? El Shaddai invites you to come and taste and see that he is good. His milk is the word. Jesus nursed often, didn't he? He got in the boat and he went away. When he got weary and he got tired and he had give and give and he couldn't give, he had nothing left. He had to go nurse, didn't he? What a privilege to nurse from El Shaddai. The one who blesses, the one who has brought us out of sin, out of darkness into his marvelous light. There's many of you here that even through the revival that's come in, their, their sin has been so great. But now they're at his feet. They're in his lap and they're nursing. God is nurturing them and raising them up. God cares for us. He clothes us in his righteousness he teaches us his word. He trains us in the way we are to go. And then when we're ready, he releases us into our own ministry, doesn't he? Now, I breastfed both of my boys, or I tried. With Scott, he was my first. He was lazy. When he, we, I, I had him, he was a lazy baby. He didn't want to eat. And the nurses told me that if I would thump his feet and make him eat, you have to keep thumping them and, and shaking them. Wake them up. Don't let them just, they'll die if you don't make them eat. So I would do that. I thought it was awfully cruel, you know, get a new baby and then start thumping it on its feet and <laughs> set as hard as you could. It's treating that thing. But I love that. And he would latch on and... It was a little rough at first, you know. It wasn't easy. But he finally found it, and he figured out what to do. Thank God he didn't have teeth when he was born. <laughs> <laughs> but, you know, he had a lack of understanding, didn't he? That if he didn't eat, he didn't know that he'd die. So I had to be there to thump him along. Come on. Come on. Latch on. Eat, baby. I love you. I need you. I want you to give me grandchildren. Latch on. <laughs> I'm protecting that seed. See, woo. <laughs> he was so sweet. He would nuzzle up to me. Those were the best times, ladies, young girls. If you hadn't tried it, please try it. It is so precious. It is so wonderful, and if you didn't, no condemnation, but you got to try it. Even if, it, you know, sometimes these young girls today, they feel awkward. 
They don't feel natural. It don't feel right. It, it just, and that's not good. You need to press in. This is your baby, your life. You've got to give. You've received. Now you've got to birth that thing and give that baby back what it needs. It needs those nutrients. At least the 14 days where it comes down and it wards off the disease. You see, I couldn't feed my first one very long. I was so upset after two weeks. I, I developed an infection. And I went to the doctor and they had to lance my breast and they had to take care of it. That night, they told me I couldn't breastfeed anymore. Oh, and I just cried. I was so upset because I wanted to, you know, nurse this baby. And he said, it's all right. Be, it's all right now, honey. He says, you know, the first 14 days milk's helped. So, you know, he calmed me down. And I said, well, you know, but you know why? what happened, though? Why did my breast get infected? It was because I was ignorant. You see... I couldn't talk to my mom about things like that. We just didn't talk about stuff like that. It was too embarrassing. And I didn't read any books. Nobody gave me no books. Nobody helped me as a young woman bring me along to teach me how to nurture my baby. I, it was just cold turkey. And I was kind of the type that I was embarrassed and there was just nobody there for me to help me. Now, my mother-in-law lived with us but I was still too embarrassed, and she was embarrassed to help me. You know, it was just, she would have if I'd have asked her, but I just, you know, I just didn't know how to do it. So I knew I was hurting, and the baby was not eating, and my breasts were getting so full, and I, I just had to get rid of this milk. And I tried to figure out, the baby nurses, he won't nurse, and, and it was just, he was sick is what it was, and he couldn't nurse, he had a cold or something. And I, I said, I've got to get this out. So what I do, I take my hands and I'm pushing the milk out. Well, you know, there's a better way, but I didn't know there was a better way. That breast pump right here is the better way. <laughs> I could have got relief. But I got myself infect infected, and that was because of the ignorance that I had. And many that come to the Lord are ignorant of his word, they don't understand how to eat and partake. And we have to be there for them to help them, to thump them. Come on, girl. You can do it. God's asking you to help. There'll be somebody he's going to put in your life, or many women he'll put in your life to help. Now, when my baby would be at my breast, my breast would be so full that the milk would start coming out and squirt the baby all in the face, you know, before it even got in his mouth and he would be so cute and he's going, <laughs> he's wanting it bad and he's hunting and he's looking everywhere for the milk. And finally, and, I'm, and I can't give it to him because I'm laughing at this baby, he's so cute, you know, and I can't get it to him fast enough. Finally, I quit laughing and I get it in him, you know, and here we go. And, oh, they just chow down. Oh, it's so good. Oh, they're hungry, and they'll just go for it. You know, you can just see them quivering to get it. And, oh, it's just wonderful. And then when they get a little bit satisfied, they'll stop, and they'll look up in your face, and they'll like, thank you, Mom. <laughs> and then they'll chow down some more, and here we go again. They take that little sigh just to thank you. It's so sweet. They look up at your face. They hear your voice. They know a mother's voice. They smell your milk. You can, oh, man, you can be away from your baby, and your baby gets, he just smells you, and he starts looking for that breast. <laughs> Stop it. You're embarrassing me. <laughs> um, you know, he's, he's fussy. He'll get fussy if he gets hungry. That's the way a lot of people in church are. They're hungry and they're fussy, but they're not eating, are they? So many times, you just stop what you're doing and you just lean down and you kiss that little baby. It's just it's too precious. It's just too precious not to do that. You love that baby. You care for it. When the baby gets full, you get a release. 
That's wonderful. <laughs> if you're away too long from your baby, your breasts will begin to leak. How many have ever had your breasts leak through your clothes? Okay. It'll run down. One day I was at church. Thank God the parsonage was behind the church. I just ran home. <laughs> It'll get all over you, though. You know, if the baby stops sucking, that he's sick. Well, God has brought us to a land flowing with milk and honey once again. I believe this is the time that he's bringing us back in. He tried to do that for the Israelites. But, you know, we've got the honeybees that we're wearing, but it's also a land of milk. It's a twofold thing. God's going to give us the honey, but he wants us to have the milk in our breasts, ladies. Full of the word of God that we can feed others to suck in his breath to suck his breast would be suck honey out of the rock it's sweet his breasts are full of good things and we can enjoy him we can have intimacy with him as we've never known we can look in his face and see his smile you see, I was hurting. I had struggled most of my life as a young woman, wife, mother, as a pastor's wife. I had no mentor in my life ever. And I don't know if that was because there was walls up in my own life that I wouldn't let people in. I don't know that. But I struggled. I struggled, but one good thing that helped me, although I had no one, I had El Shaddai. And frustrated, all the things that I went through in life, not understanding things that happened, not understanding church people that would hurt us and tell lies on us. They were not nursing, for sure. <laughs> But I kept nursing. I just keep nursing. And he'd fill me with his word. And the Bible says, hope maketh not a shame. And I just kept depending on him. You know, Lord, you can get me through this. How many of you have ever tried to talk to your husband? And they, I don't understand what's the problem. You know, <laughs> forget it. <laughs> but anyway, I just kept nursing nursing oh if i'd have had a friend i didn't have a friend you see in the ministry pastor's wives get afraid of their congregations they don't trust them you know why some of you haven't been trustworthy you've heard us and the walls go up so as women we need to get it together in love and loyalty to one another you know just like my mother-in-law lived with us for 10 years. And I couldn't have lived with no one else but her. She was a doll. But she got on my nerves. And she told me one day, you know, she says, I know I get on your nerves. And I said, yes, you do. I said, and I know I get on your nerves too. And I said, my husband gets on my nerves and my children. I said, but that doesn't mean we don't love each other, does it? So, see, you can see one another's faults, but you can still love them, can't you? And you don't have to go share it with your brother or sister. But I was made somewhat ineffective as a pastor's wife. I felt like people could approach me. I don't think I've ever been a pastor's wife that was above that or thought too good that I wouldn't, you couldn't come and talk to me. I know a lot of pastor's wife. I've heard people say that some pastor's wives are like they're not approachable. I don't think I was quite that way. I could be fooled, but I wasn't mentoring women like I should have been. I could have do, done far greater than I've done. But until God touched me, it's like I've walked out an intercession for women most of my life and their feelings and the hurts and the stuff they jump, they go through, you name it. 
that the, the Lord has helped me to and give me an understanding of all that. But where would I have been sooner had I had someone to come along and help me? I wonder if God's breast leaked because his people are too long in partaking. Now, I'm not putting God on a, a level. Just kind of get the picture with me, okay? Don't go out of here and say, well, you know, blah, blah, blah. It's not a doctrine, okay? <laughs> It'll preach, though. <laughs> Many aren't thirsty anymore. Many have their own agendas. God do this for me. God's going to raise me up and put me on the platform. It's going to be my ministry. It's going to take me out. Some are bitter and hurt at God. They're anorexic. They've quit eating. Some are bulimic and they throw up everything their pastor serves them on Sunday. Can I tell you that pastors get so frustrated? I know my husband has given himself to his people. He's a wonderful shepherd. He is truly a, a shepherd. He loves his people. And when he studies hard and prays and prepares for these people and then he sees no fruit in, the, in their life, I tell you, it's discouraging to a pastor. Brownsville is really one of the greatest places we've ever pastored. These people are so hungry, and you can see why God did pour out his spirit here. They nurse well. They had great pastors before us, and they respected the man of God, and God brought them to this place. Some have pumped and pumped your pastors and their wives. Always give me a word, give me a word. Have you ever had anybody that's always, uh, you know, this is the same problems. My God, get it together. <laughs> you know, somebody didn't speak to the pastor, this and that. I tell you, ladies, quit pumping your pastor and his wife grow up. <laughs> Some have implants put in their breast. Now, for those of you that's done that, that's fine. You know, and no condemnation on that. I'd like to add something happen, <laughs> but I was too scared. <laughs> but I'm telling you, that's the world's way. And you're putting something in God never intended. And that's what we've been doing as women putting artificial stuff, we, we, we're trying to enhance ourselves to look better for the men, for uh, whatever. I, I don't understand that altogether, okay? But we're, we're reaching out for all these things to make us look beautiful and, and glamorous. Sister Ruth Heflin is the prettiest lady in this room. She doesn't use any makeup. She just glows. I'm like, you're sick. <laughs> the money I could save if I look like this woman. But it is the glory. See, but we're putting all this artificial stuff on us to get it right. You know, for who? There comes a time when a child must be weaned. He's got to. He's got to grow up. The Lord's tired of nursing some of us. He says, daughter, I have many places I want to take you. I want to take you off of my knee. I want you to start crawling. I want you to start walking. I want you to get in the car and go down the street. There's a sister that's hurting. I want to tell you all about her, and I want you to lay your hands on her and pray for her and bring her out. He wants you to throw away your pacifiers. All your securities, your things, you know, some kids are getting buck teeth because they won't let their pacifiers go. We need to go on to maturity. Let's turn to Hebrews 5, 12 through 15.
It says, For when the time ye ought to be teachers, ye have need that one teach you again, which is the first principles of the oracles of God. Uh, and are become such as have need of milk, and not strong meat. For everyone that uses milk is unskillful in the word of, of righteousness, for he is a babe. But strong meat belongeth to them that are of full age, even those who by reason of use have their senses exercised to discern both good and evil, can I tell you that's why so many of the peoples are falling back and not following God because they're staying on the milk and, and eventually you get hungry and you start looking other places for things that don't satisfy and they don't go on to maturity and eat the meat. The meat will help you and, and make strong bones and grow. There's good things in meat. Make you fat. Make your bones fat. But many have stopped going on to maturity, and they cannot discern good for evil. They get in trouble. They fall into adultery. They get into pornography because they cannot discern good from evil. I don't need a bracelet on my arm. What would Jesus do to remind me, what would Jesus do? I've taken the word of God and I've hid it in my heart that I might not sin against him. It's in my heart. It's not on my arm. And maybe our young people need that. But what they need more, I declare to you, would be the word of God pumped into them through women. You see, men are out on the job places doing their job, bringing home the money. But the women that stay home, they can be feeding their own babies and nurturing their families, raising up fine men and women to take over their place. He wants us to grow up. We need to be nurturing and feeding our own families. We need to be faithful to our families. How can God entrust you with his children when you aren't faithful to your own home? When you're out making a ministry for yourself and you don't care that your daughter's hurting, she's going through puberty, she's developing her breasts or developing, she's having her time, monthly time. You know what it is to wake up one morning and find out I'm a lady without being told that's going to happen. Do you know the horrors that can be to a young girl because nobody was there to prepare her? A lot of us see have not. We've just been left to TV. We've been left with somebody that don't care. They're harlings. They've been hired out. What does God say? God says that women should be keepers at home. No condemnation for those that work outside the home. Many of you have had to go to the workplace to survive. But I ask those of you that have gone to the workplace to be part of that crowd or corporate America, to have a name and a title, I ask you about that. What does God say? Had you drank that word where he said women to be keepers at home? I know this is new. I don't hear anybody saying this. It's a new thing. But I'm telling you, God saw me that I gave myself to my husband. My husband didn't want me to work. He wanted me home with the children. And there's such a blessing with that. I would not have known God had I had been working and coming home and fixing meals and taking care of kids. And I don't see how y'all do it. It is too stressful today. Even Dr. Dobson says that lawyers and doctors that are women are leaving their practices and going home. They cannot take the stress and the pressures anymore out there. 
This is a new word and it offends. I'm sorry, but I feel this, like this is what we're God. You know, I know some situations cannot be changed and, and it's all right. God's got you out there in the workforce and it'll work, okay? No condemnation, but I'm saying to those women that feel the stress of this thing and you've got the finances and the money to stay home, ask God about it and take care of your kids. I'm not talking about when your children are gone. You know, I wouldn't be doing what I'm doing had going all over the country had I had not raised my children. My children are grown. But see, God brought me, and I nursed from him, and he brought me along to a place that now I, I'm free. I'm free to follow him. But I wouldn't leave my babies to go do what I'm doing. You understand? I didn't know I was going to say all this. Wasn't in my notes. Wasn't in my notes. But God has entrusted you with your families, your babies. They're your babies. And one day, we'll stand before the Lord, and our little children, our quivers, will be standing around us. They were our arrows. You see, if we teach these babies the Word of God, bring them alongside of us, then we can take, there'll be arrows in our quiver. And what we can't do anymore, when we're old, our children will be there and they'll shoot the arrows and they'll go into the enemies. See, they'll be there and they'll sustain you in your old life and nourish you. Hmm. You see, coming to Brownsville, we've been here 15 and a half years. There were many pastors before us. There were seven. We were the eighth one. And they brought this congregation along. They, nur they were nurtured. It's a healthy church. And they were brought to this time and place that they would birth a revival. That the revival, God says, I can use that church. He looked for a volunteer probably in many churches but he found a volunteer, and he saw that they were full, that their breasts were full. And, oh, yeah, that church, they're going to be able to, to uh, nurse what's, what I've got for them. They've got the milk, and it'll sustain them. It'll sustain this thing. Do you know come June the 18th, third anniversary, if we go that long, if the Lord allows that, whatever, we're just here for him. We don't care. It's his work. If the revival ends tomorrow, okay, God, we'll go on and we'll keep working for you. But do you know this will be the longest running revival in history that's lasted? God needs midwives. He needs some midwives. He's asking you today, will you be a midwife and, and help birth these babies and bring these children along? In Song of Songs, the 8th chapter, 8th verse, it says, We have a little sister whose breasts are not yet formed. What shall we do for our sister when she is spoken for? You see... All women are going to grow up. Their breasts, they're going to grow. And one day, the hope of most ladies, unless God calls you aside like he has Ruth and ask of her something far greater than he's ever asked of us, he's going to say to you, daughter, you know, how, who's, I have a man for you. How are you going to prepare yourself? And it's every girl's dream to marry and most everybody's dream to marry. And they want to be beautiful for their husband. But she's going to need to grow and be, you know, just have that look of a woman, you know, where her hips start taking shape and start moving out in places and things shift around. She's beginning to take a little shape, this little girl. Do you know an undeveloped breast indicates a lack of maturity in one's affections and spiritual things? 
It says in verse 9, If she be a wall, we will build upon it a silver battlement. If she be a door, we will panel it with cedar. The Shulamite woman says, I am a wall. My breasts are like towers. So I became in his eyes as one who finds favor. But now her concern would be for her little sister. She's full. Her breasts are like towers. But now she feels good about herself. She's got confidence. Now she looks back and she sees her little sister that has no breast. Oh, I can help her. I can help her develop. That's what God's asking you to do, is to help the young girls. Help those that he sends into our life by loving them and helping them to mature. And when they've, you've lost a baby, and you hear of someone that's lost a baby, I can help her. She's struggling. I've been there. I know how she feels. Go, and God will give you the opportunity through the pain that you've bore and, and things you haven't understood. You will be able to minister out of your pain and your hurt, and it will be a release, the milk. Ooh. It will be released and healing even for you because you see what you give out, you get back. And more milk and your breasts will even become bigger and larger as you give it away. I've been through a divorce, you could say. I know I can help my sister. But you know so many times when people get divorced in our church, we shun them. They already are totally, totally rejected. And the church steps back because, well, she's single now. She's a threat to my husband and me. She might try to steal it. We're sick. It's a sick church. We, with large breasts, need to reach out to our sister, especially if you've been through a divorce. You haven't gone through that divorce for nothing. You've, you've experienced terrible grief and pain. Don't hang on to the bitterness. Go to your sister and let that be released and say, I've been there and I know exactly how you feel. Don't give them a word, a bunch of stuff. You know, you're going to pound on them. Just say, I know how you feel. Just saying those words means so much. Not all this super spiritual stuff. Now, come on, get over this. You, you, know, you can't do that. You've got to love them, and you've got to let them nurse until they get full of the meat, until they're ready for the meat. People are hurting today. We see this at Brownsville all the time. People come in, and one young man in, that just st sticks out so much to me. It was a young black boy. that He was about 16, but maybe 18 by then. But he was... Uh, his testimony so touched my heart. He told about how he was in and out of foster homes and he was abused every foster home he went into. And he just, you know, he's just tossed a pillar to post. His, his mother, I think, was a drug addict. It was just terrible. But he came to this revival and gave his heart to the Lord and he was so excited. And here he is in the baptismal pool telling about this. And he said, I didn't have anybody to tell about what God had done for me. And he said, so I just opened the phone book and stuck my finger <laughs> in the phone book. He just wanted to tell somebody what God had done for him. And he stuck his finger in the phone book and he called, dialed the number and he called him and he said, sir, I just want you to know I got saved tonight. And I gave my heart to Jesus and I just wanted somebody to know Father God, guess who it was? He had his finger. He was led of the Spirit. His little finger landed right on a pastor's name. <laughs> the 
that pastor today, he said, is mentoring him. Isn't God good? Why did God show up on Father's Day at Brownsville? Did he want to make a statement? He said, oh, people, he said, your parents might have failed you. He said, but I'm here to tell you I'm not like them. I'll never leave you. I'll never forsake you. God had to come down and do it himself. El Shaddai is once again, he's got a multitude out there. His arms are empty. He wants more. That's his cry. He wants more. His breasts are so full. He's got so much milk, and he wants it. He wants to feed more. There's many more that need feeding. And God is going to allow some of you to go back, and you're going to be a feeding station. I really believe that. I was in Augusta, Georgia, and I'm closing, believe it or not. I was in Augusta, Georgia in our first church. There was a little child there that, that uh, had a shunt she had to go put in, have put inside her brain and her body to drain off the fluid. And we went down and sat with the people at a state hospital there in Augusta. And we had to stay all day because it was a long procedure or surgery. So... I was just, you know, walking around the hospital, looking around, and, and I came to a room that was open, and it was full of babies in this room, in, in these little hospital trays. And I looked around at all the babies in there, and there was maybe two or three mothers. And I heard this baby crying and crying, and I walked over to its crib, and this little black baby was there. Now, these were black and white babies. There was a mixture there. There was this little black baby laying there, and he had mucus. My husband said, not to say the other word. I usually say the other word, but I'm going to be good since this might be on tape. Mucus, bubbles coming out of his nose, and he can't breathe. He can't breathe. My heart, like, you know, who's going to help this baby? I said, Where's its mother? I asked this lady to my left. Where's the mother? She said, he doesn't have a mother. I said, he was left on the doorstep. Well, here comes God on me. And I am filled with his love, filled with his compassion for this baby. And I'm seeing a syringe in this basket. And this is a little black baby. Now, listen, this is in the South. You know how us Southern people, you know how the prejudices can be there. So this was my first step with reaching out and loving the black. You see, that's God. And if you've got prejudice in your heart, you've got to get it out. But my love, the love of God consumed me to go and reach in and get that little syringe. And I suck that stuff out of that baby. And as I did, hot tears flowing down my face, dropping all over this baby. And I'm not saying a word. I'm just bawling and cleaning this baby up. Countless thousands upon thousands of these babies are out there that have grown into adulthood. Shoo. They're adults now. They're rejected. They feel hurt. They're angry. That's why they wear their hair spiked. That's why they color their hair purple. That's why they wear all this stuff. It's because they're angry. They're hurt. I have nobody in my life that I can talk to. But there's El Shaddai, the one who blesses. That's what he wants to do. He wants to bless his people. He loves us. If you're a mother and you've birthed a baby, you know the love that you have for your children. It can't be measured to how God loves his children. He loves us so much. We had a lady in our baptismal pool the other night that said, 
She was 35 years old, and she was at Hope House, House for Druggies and Alcoholics. And she said for the first time in her life, she heard that Jesus loved her. She had been drunk all her life. She never remembers being sober. And she said, I like that. And so she bought it. And she got baptized the other night. She's on her way to recovery. And if she'll stay in Hope House and nurse from those people like Jerry Hill did. See, Jerry nursed. She, her thirst couldn't be quenched. She nursed. And then I'm telling you, too, as women, you have the opportunity to nurse your husbands. I don't care if they're pastors, whatever they are. The, the, you have the opportunity. They depend on us, let's face it. We're one, and, and, and they're, by themselves, they're no good. They can preach all the grand sermons, be the macho-looking man, but I'm telling you, there's the side of that little boy that he still needs that wife to nurture him. And that's what Jerry did. She stood by, Jerry, uh, by Steve. She kept eating from the Lord. She kept nursing. She got on good meat, got some good meat in her, and now she stands back, and her husband stands at the gates of the city see but she was willing to be there for her husband and get herself in line with him you see god wants deborah and barrick together not overpowering one or the other but knowing your place getting under your covering understanding your role as a woman and being happy about that and content and not trying to go above what God has placed. It doesn't work. It's frustrating. A lady had a dream. You now she was, they went to Holland or, nor, where, where'd they go? Mary Audrey go? Where was this? Finland? Somewhere over there. Yeah, Europe. She was over there and, and all of a sudden the Holy Spirit took them both down. And she saw a vision of dance of cows. Their udders were just full, just just full, ready to burst. And the cows started dancing. And then the cows turned into women. And the Lord, she said, Lord, what does that mean? And he said, That's my women. They're full of the word. Full of the milk of the word. He, they're ready to, to do something else. They need something. They need to get on the meat now. Let's move on. They're full, though. Ladies, you're, if you do not do the natural thing of letting people nurse from you, you'll dry up. You're, you're going to be in pain. You're going to be miserable. Get on with God's program. He's got a program for you. He's got a plan. There's children out there that need mentoring there's your cousins there's your sister her life is messed up think of the people countless in your neighbor they're everywhere god has women on assignment this is your day and your hour in first samuel the sixth chapter and the tenth starting at the tenth verse going to the 13th i'm ending up you can look that up later. But seven months, the Philistines had the ark of God. And because of the destruction that it was bringing upon the people, they wanted to get rid of it. Get it out of here. So they went to their priest and their diviners, and they asked him, what can we do? How can we get this, car, this ark out of here? We don't want it here. If this is God's judgment on us, so their wise counselors said, well, get two milk cows that's never been yoked. Take their calves, their new calves, and shut them up. Take them away from them. And put the yoke upon them and tie them to the cart. 
so that they can carry the ark. And the Bible says that they look not to the right nor to the left, these animals, as they did that. These cows that left their babies behind, all the securities of home, all the times they know someone was going to bring them hay. What do what cows eat? Hay? Maybe that's why I say hay. <laughs> Edit that. Here they are, though. They're not looking to the right nor looking to the left. And they said if these cows don't turn around, which is the most natural thing to do to go back to their babies, if they're restrained to go straightway, we'll know that God wants to get out of this place. And he wants that cart back where it belongs. And the rightful owners give it back to his people. So here goes the cows. They're not looking to the right nor the left. Something is constraining them to go straight forward. And the Bible says that they went lowing as they went, bellowing. Oh, God, those are my babies. Those are my babies back there. How can I leave my babies? Oh, I've got hay back there, all the securities. They're there, and I've got to leave that. And God's asking you, Will you carry his presence? You've been back here doing all your things. You got your niceties in your home. You got your color schemes. You got it all down to a science, and that's okay. It's okay. But don't put it above God. He's asking you, will you carry my presence and leave the things that you're happy with and, and that you're, you're so satisfied. He said, but I've got meat that you know not, that I've got places to take you. And he wants you to get tied to him. Let him put his yoke upon you. Let's turn to Ruth 4. talking about Naomi and Ruth. She mentored her, didn't she? She was willing to leave everything behind, wasn't she, to go with her. Oh, Orpha, she wasn't. She didn't want to leave her family. She just couldn't do that. But Ruth was willing to follow her mother-in-law because like Jerry, she saw something in her the one that was there that carried the presence of God with her, and she would rather go with her. She felt good. Her milk was good, and she had nursed from her. But look what the Bible says in verse 13. So Boaz took Ruth, and she was his wife. And when he went in unto her, the Lord gave her conception, and she bare a son. And the woman said unto Naomi, Blessed be the Lord which hath not left thee this day without a kinsman, that his name may be famous in Israel. And he shall be unto thee a restorer of thy life and a nourisher of thine old age. For thy daughter-in-law which loveth thee is better to thee then seven sons hath borne him. And it says that Naomi took the child and laid it in her bosom and became a nurse unto it. Isn't that beautiful? How would you like to see your spiritual grandchildren? Wouldn't that be wonderful to see your children bearing children? The joy of, of this grandchild but to see your spiritual children. And you, like Ruth, that have never married, never had children, God will give you spiritual children. She is like a mother of Israel. That's what she is. That's why I like her here. 
She's got that Pentecostal flavor, that taste. It's that old sound that I heard as a child. A lot of the new ones haven't heard that. But I like to keep that around me. It reminds me where we came from, where I first got my beginnings. And I'm happy and content having my nursemaid and, and my grandmother here. It's wonderful. And Lila, she, I never had a mentor like I told you. God brought her into my life. Oh, when we get together, we have the best time talking about the Word. We just get so excited and... I mean, she's just, I can get, my breast are towers now, girls. <laughs> and old Diane, she's got a Martha, Mary Martha Ministries. Why, she bursts all this stuff, and her breast is full. She's got women going everywhere. She's got these places everywhere, all over the country. And, oh, I can't tell you enough about little, my friend Lois. I'll tell you about that tomorrow. She's really... She, you got big breasts, too. <laughs> and I just met Burl. Burl's got a ministry to women. She loves them. She loves them. I tell you, it's awesome, awesome day for women. And Deborah, she was a wife. It doesn't say that she was a mother. Because she wasn't a mother, maybe she was used as to be a judge, see, that God could use her. She had more time than probably the other mothers did, but she made herself available. That's the whole key, ladies. You know, we don't want to fool with people. We're just burnouts ourselves. We're tired. We want to be left alone. Just get in front of the boob tube and just sit there and let your mind go way off somewhere. Then you don't have to deal with anybody. That's not God's purpose, and you're living below yourself to do that. It's a new day. It's a new day. And like Ruth spoke about last night, the wise and understanding. Did I do something wrong? Is there a man in here? Where did I get that? Oh, okay. Edit that too. Oh, Lord. I know y'all are hungry. Maybe you're hungry for God, though. Will you be a Ruth? Will you be a Deborah, making yourself available to let those that are thirsty nurse from you? Your breasts are full, too. But you're going to start hurting if you don't start giving it away. God's been so good to us. You know, in this move of God, the theme has been more, Lord. We even got T-shirts out by it. More, Lord, more. He said, I will give you enough, daughters. Wake up. He said, now he's asking you more. Produce what he's given you, and then you can get more. God bless you. I, I just thank you for taking this to heart. And, and please, I'm not backing up from what I said. There is no condemnation with what I said about the mothers. But take that to your heart because God knows how things work and work for the good and makes for happy home. Take that to your heart. Don't just throw it over. Let God speak to you about that. Shoo. Well, hallelujah. Everybody stand. Because the hour is late, I'm just going to speak a blessing over you. Father, Lord, I asked you to forgive us as women that 
We have not been in places where you would have called us, Lord, to be able to birth and to, to father, to nourish those that you have brought alongside us. Many times we were too busy. I asked you to forgive us as women that we forgot our role, that we were more concerned about our image and how we look and if our clothes match and how our jewelry looked and our nails. and Lord, for all the times that we wouldn't cry in church because we didn't want to mess our makeup up, God, forgive us for the vanity. Just forgive us, Lord. Make us beautiful. We're beautiful in your sight, Lord. The blood covers, and we thank you for Jesus' precious blood that was shed. But, Father, I'm asking you today, Lord, Holy Spirit, that you go deep into the hearts of every woman here, not one excluded. No one has arrived, Lord. Shine your light into our hearts. And, Lord, even those that say they're too old and, and they just can't do that anymore, help them to know, Lord, that that they are so blessed, even in their old age, that the women, young women, need to hear their words of wisdom. Oh, Father, encourage every woman here. <laughs> Anoint them with a new anointing, a Deborah anointing, Lord, that we can declare the works of the Lord. Shh, shh, shh. Lord, Help them to have the restraint of God upon them that they won't look to the right nor to the left and be turned aside, but, God, they will go straightway to carry your presence. I bless them, Lord, to carry your presence, that they will be in their rightful place, that they will stand with Barak in honor, but, Lord... If you choose to speak through women, that's okay, Lord, because we do have an influence, and we know it, Lord. And we pray, Lord, on every woman that you will give her the wisdom to speak to her husband, to leaders, and with grace, much grace, Lord, upon them, that they will be able to speak your word and that it will not fall on dead ears. Don't let them be anxious, Lord, for when they're nursing from you, Lord, it will be a natural thing. When they've received from you, God, it will be a natural thing with them. Now, Lord, we're asking for something very special at this conference, Lord. I pray, Lord, that you'll just touch each and every one of them in a special way, Lord in a very special way. Phew. Mm. Bruce, do you have a word? Shoo, <laughs> shoo, you. If you'll come and lay your hands on me, be my midwife. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. trust in you, Lord. 
the Deborah's. Let it start in me, Lord. Let it arise even in this meeting, Lord. You've called me to be a prophetess, and I claim oh, that in the name of Jesus. Amen. Let's stand and begin to prophesy. Thus saith the Lord himself. You shall upon die. Thus saith the Lord God. Jack Pie. Stand tall. Woo! Palm trees, Nampo Pahatarambasi. Shoo, 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 shoo. Oh, shoo, shoo. Oh, that your lightnings and your thunder comes forth, Lord. Shoo, 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 shoo. Toram Pahaha. Shoo, Pahaha, Torabakasi. Ah, yes, Lord. Oh, let God arise and let his enemies be scattered. Whatever you want, oh Lord, whatever you want, oh Lord, I will say, I will do, I will go, oh Lord, I will say it, Lord, if you fill my mouth, fill my mouth, Lord, with your word, oh Lord, you know, Lord, I have nursed from you, I will declare the Hey, la 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 la
what he says and not speak out of my own mind I, I fear it don't, I, I don't be too careful. what I yes I know I'm saying why I cannot is I want to be so careful and so pure before God I don't want to say anything he's not saying but God you know my heart I want to speak I want to speak it Lord not out of my head but in my spirit and Lord I pray you've got these mid rocks around me and Lord <laughs> This is your opportunity, and I want it, Lord. Yes, yes. I want it. It's mine. I claim it in Jesus' name. I don't care what I look like. I want this. It's mine. It's my anointing, and I want it, Lord. And I'm going to walk in. If they, if y'all will stay with me, let's just stay with me. I want it, and he's going to anoint me. I'm not going to move from this. <laughs> Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Tapopora de Kesi. Shoot, shoot, shoot. Thus saith the Lord, daughters rise up. <laughs> Ha, ha, ha. 
<laughs> yes, Lord. Ha. <laughs> Hallelujah, for the Lord saith, despise not the day of small beginnings, for thou hast opened thy mouth, and thou hast uttered the word, even as Deborah uttered the song, thou hast uttered the word, rise up daughters, and the prophetic command to rise up, yes, ye have come forth, not only in this place, yea, but it hath come forth uh, for the nation. Amen. It hath come forth, yes. yea, for the nations of the world. And yea, even from this day forward, uh, thou shalt see a new rising up of the Deborahs of Amen. the world. Oh, a yes. new rising up of the Deborahs of the world. For although they have not heard thy word, even in this place, the word of the Lord hath gone forth, even to the ends of the earth. And yea, they shall arise. The lightnings of the Lord have surely gone forth from this place. Out of thy mouth, the declaration of the Lord surely cometh forth. And yea, it shall be established that on this day, yea, the 20th day of January, 1998, the call went forth, the proclamation was heard, even in Brownsville, that the new release for the Debras of the world had come, and so shall it be established saith the Just respond to the word of the Lord. We will rise up. We will rise up. We will rise up. According to the word of the Lord, we will rise up. Oh, according to the prophetic call, we will respond and rise up. Arise, arise, arise and shine for your 
from our labors, Lord. We are ceasing from our labors, Lord. go uninhib uninhibited, unhindered, oh God, to fly, to fly and spread. Oh, to spread the pollen, Lord, to collect it. Oh, for the honey. A new sound, a new word, a fresh word. Oh, a fresh word, a fresh word. Ooh. Yes, Lord, yes, yes, yes. For there shall further be no more condemnation. There shall be no word of condemnation. But thou shalt speak the word of inspiration, the word of lifting up, saith the Lord. For I have called thee to be builders and not destroyers. I have called thee to be planters and not those, yea, that pull up the roots. I have called thee, yea, that thou shouldst be those that speak my word and allow the faith, yea, to cause it to grow, to cause it to build. Yea, thou shalt build, thou shalt build, thou shalt build. Thou shalt plant, thou shalt plant, thou shalt plant. Yea, thou shalt raise up, raise up, raise up. Thou shalt be the restorer, yea, of paths to dwell in, saith the Lord. And thou shalt be the repairer of the breach, saith the Lord. I shall use thee in ways, yea, that thou shalt be amazed, even as thou art used, saith the Lord. For pastors shall call thee in, for they shall see the healing anointing, the reconciling anointing. They shall see the new anointing that comes, that lifts, yea, that gathers, that gathers in, yea, from here and there and from everywhere, a gathering in, yea, that all may be compact together, a gathering in, yea, that all of my word may be fulfilled, a gathering in, yea, that there should be no one that stands in the corner of the field, but that everyone together shall stand in the midst of the field, a gathering in by thy word, a gathering in by thine action, a gathering in, yea, by thy pourings forth, a gathering in, yea, of many peoples, a gathering in of all of the streams, yea, that all of the streams together shall make the mighty river, that there shall not be any stream that remaineth a separate stream, but yea, that thy voice shall call them all in, and that there shall be the mighty flow, the great flow of the corporate river, the flow of the river that comes from the throne of God, the flow of the river that makes glad the people of God. Oh, thy voice shall be used, saith the Lord, and thou shall be those that call it in, 
that gather it in by thy voices, that gather it in by thy faith, that gather it in by thine anointing, that gather it in by thy unity, that gather it in by thy love. All nations, all kindreds, all peoples, all nations, all kindreds, all peoples, oh, so shall it be. So shall it be, so shall it be. Let's give the Lord a clap offering. So shall it be, hallelujah. And I shall cause the spirit of prophecy to come upon thee. Oh, for thou shalt be truly Deborah's, saith the Lord. Oh, yea, they shall come unto thee, and thou shalt prophesy. And yea, it shall be the prophetic anointing that shall lift thee up, saith the Lord. For yea, thou shalt not speak for thyself, saith the Lord. Thou shalt not speak for thy denomination, saith the Lord. Thou shalt not speak for thy point of view, saith the Lord. But thou shalt speak for me, and the words that thou shalt speak shall surely come to pass. For it shall be a creative flow, a creative flow that shall go forth from thy mouth, saith the Lord. It shall go forth, yea, into the hearts of kings, establishing my order and my purposes in the leaders of the world. It shall be a word, yea, that shall be heard, even unto the ends of the earth, saith the Lord. I shall cause thy voice to be heard near, and thy voice shall be heard far, for I anoint thee with an anointing to prophesy. Prophesy, prophesy, prophesy. Speak in my name, saith the Lord. Say, so says the Lord. And as thou shalt speak in my name, even while thou art speaking, there shall be a shaking. Even while thou art speaking, there shall be a coming together. Even while thou art speaking, yea, thou shalt see the word being fulfilled. I shall do it speedily, speedily, speedily. For time is winding up, saith the Lord. And I am anointing thee and sending thee back. Yea, even unto thine own places with an authority. Yea, for timidity is fleeing away. The fear of man is coming to naught. And yea, I am giving thee a boldness that thou shalt speak my word. And the word that thou shalt speak shall be a sure word, saith the Lord, not of condemnation, not of their tearing down. Yea, but it shall be a sure word of lifting up, of lifting up for even those that thou hast not wanted to be lifted up. Thou shalt say unto them, be lifted up, and they shall be. Thou shalt be amazed at the promotions that shall come. Thou shalt be amazed at how I shall do it. For I shall lift up one after another for this day and hour with new anointings, with new power. Oh, I shall do it. It shall be that prophetic voice, the creative flow that shall flow forth out of thy mouth. Wisdom coming forth from thee. Knowledge flowing out of thy mouth. The decree of the Lord being established, the order 
brother, yea, being promoted, I say this unto thee, thou shalt be amazed, for thou hast come. Some have come but looking for the donkeys, but thou goest home as another woman. Thou goest home as another one. Thou goest home anointed, anointed, anointed. Anointed for this day and hour, anointed for my purposes, anointed, anointed, anointed by the Lord. Hallelujah. <laughs> For there are those in this place who have been bound with such a domination by fear, and you have not understood what it, this tact has been about. There are those in this place who have even heard the voices of the enemy speak unto you that you would absolutely lose your mind. But I would say to you that I have been transcending you into a different spiritual realm, for you have opened up your spirit unto me. Just sing in the spirit. Let the victory come. Two and threes and fours dance together. Ay, 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 Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. Oh, this is the day that the Lord hath made. Oh, this is the day that the Lord hath made. This is the day that the Lord hath made. We will rejoice. 
and be glad. Oh, this is the day that the Lord hath made. Oh, this is the day that the Lord hath made. Oh, this is the day that the Lord hath We will rejoice and be glad. Oh, this is the day that the Lord hath made. This is the day that the Lord hath made. This is the day that the Lord hath made. We will rejoice and be glad. Oh, this is the day that the Lord hath made. This is the day that the Lord hath made. This is the day that the Lord we will rejoice and be glad. This is the day that the Lord hath made. Oh, this is the day that the Lord hath made. This is the day that the Lord hath we will rejoice and be glad. Hallelujah, 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 we will rejoice and be glad. Deborah arose and the work was complete. Oh, Deborah arose and the work was complete. Oh, Deborah arose and the work was complete. Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. Let's do a couple of Hebrew songs. Give us a C minor. Amen. Havenu Shalom Malekin. Havenu Shalom Malekin. Havenu Shalom Malekin. Havenu Shalom 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 Malek. Havenu Shalom Malekin. Havenu Shalom Malekin. Avenu Shalom Malekim Avenu Shalom 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 Avenu Shalom Malekim Avenu Shalom Malekim Come and join the dance Allah Malekim Avenu Shalom Let's have enough people to go around the church Avenu Shalom First two, lie, 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 Keep going on around the church. Lie, 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 l
around the world, around the globe, he calls us. Deny yourself and come forth and give yourself to me. Shoo, 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 shoo. Thus saith the Lord, and I will give you a place that you've never been. A place in my bosom. Mm. Yes. Mysteries that are yet to be known. <gasps> that will draw the body of Christ together. <laughs> Thank you, Lord. Thank you. Thank you, Lord. Oh, 
You are awesome in this place, mighty God. You are awesome in this place, Abba Father. Compton is um, the administrative. She represents much of the administrative. She, that's her office here. 
and, um, and the Lord has blessed me with being able to head intercession. And I believe that the type and shadow of Moses, the leader, and, and uh, today Brenda stands here not only on behalf of herself, but she's one flesh with her husband. And this is a, a prophetic statement of our unity with one another. And with the lifting of the arms, remember Aaron and her never attempted to take the authority or the rod out of the leader's hand. And so I want to make a declaration today that we will stand as intercessors and administrative helps, Lord God, to lift the hands of our pastors and the leaders, not attempting to, to rob them of their authority, but that we are merely support. We know that's our place, and we delight in that. And so, God, as it is being spoken here by our actions, let it be released into every church and in every and in every nation and all across our nation to bring forth your harvest because of the unity, the blessed, the blessing that comes because of the unity, life evermore. We are standing on holy ground, and I know that there are angels all around. earlier in the service that I should just give my time this afternoon for what God was doing this morning just to let that flow continue and you know preachers always have another story another scripture another something but God has done it by his spirit amen <laughs> I would like to encourage you before I turn this over to the leadership. If you haven't read my brother's book, The Power of Prophecy, there are a few copies available at the table where my book glory is. And it will release you to flow as Deborah flowed in that prophetic anointing. That's what God's calling us unto. Praise the Lord. Amen. Give the Lord a hand. He's 
deserves all the glory and all the praise.